good morning to all our viewers and welcome to Prabodhan Manch of Parley's sixth webinar. The monsoon in India plays a critical role in the life of Indian farmers and in the entire agriculture sector. This year, the monsoon turned out even more important than normal, as in the midst of a pandemic, in its monsoon session, both houses of the parliament passed three landmark legislations. Legislations that promise to bring about fundamental changes to India's agrarian economy and perhaps the full liberalization of the sector. Predictably, the opposition parties are playing hardball and the media still seems enamored with other topics. But we at Prabodhan Mancha believe this is yet another opportunity for us to present our audience the full picture of this historic development. To bring out the intricacies of the end-to-end -end value chain in the agricultural economy, we have with us someone who is hands-on managing this business and has extensive practical and technical knowledge of the subject. Mr. Balram Yadav, a postgraduate in agribusiness management from the prestigious IAM Ahmedabad, former chairman of the Compound Livestock Feed Manufacturers Association of India, and more importantly, the current managing director of Godrej Agrovet. Welcome, Balram, and over to you. And as we spoke, given the nature of this topic, we can keep this a good mix of Hindi and English. So for you, for your opening remarks. Thank you, Mrugank. Uh, it's a pleasure to be invited and I, I'm really honored. And I'll try to do my best here. The topic is very vast. Indian agriculture sector, you know, uh, comprises both pure agriculture, uh, animal agriculture, forestry, etc. So we will try and cover whatever we can cover. Since you started with monsoon, so let me tell you that two things which are always very important for Indian agriculture is God and government. And uh, God has been very kind this year. Monsoon has been 8% higher than a long period average and we are in for a bumper kharif and a bumper rabi. Again, because soil moisture conditions and the reservoir uh, uh, storage is very, very good. As far as government is concerned, so I think why we are discussing is because government wants to reduce its role in this sector, which is very, very important. And rightly so that some people have called it, particularly Dr. Ashok Gulati, the foremost agri-scientist in this country who was CSEP chairman, called it a 1999, uh, 1991 moment for Indian agriculture. Uh, friends, Bharatiya Krishi Udyog ne bhoat achha kaam kiya hai pichle 70 saal mein, jahaan pe shortages thi, maha pe hum joh hai ab ek uh, agri surplus country hai. Hum bhoat sari cheezo mein number one hai, jise milk mein hum number one hai, Kafi horticultural crops production mein hum number one hai dunia mein, we are number one in pulses, we are number two in wheat, we are number two in rice, cotton, sugarcane, and tea. We are likely to be number one in cotton this year. We are number three in egg production, number five in chicken production, and uh, we are threatening to cross 300 million tons of food grain production this year, which will be an all-time record. So I think from a country of shortages, we have become country of surpluses, and that has created its own set of problems. Now we have to deal with problem of plenty in almost everything. We have more wheat than we can eat. We have more rice than we can eat. We have more sugar than we can eat. We have more milk, more chicken, more eggs, uh, everything. Even pulses, which was which were short about seven, eight years ago, are now in surplus. And at one time we were importing pulses. Now we have import, du import duty on the import of pulses. The only thing which we are importing right now is almost 50 million, 15 million tons of edible oil which cost the country close to about 80, 90,000 crores per annum. And that is where the focus of the government is now to make uh, ourselves atmanirbhar in that area also. Now for years together, there is a very big structural flaw also in this sector. So 50% of the population contributes 15% of the GDP. And I think that, um, uh, that says everything about at the condition of this sector because most of it is subsistence farming and requires regular support of the government. And uh, the model for the last 70 years was more and more production. It was productivity led and everything what government 
and the farmers did was to increase production. And uh, the, once we have a problem of plenty, the model had to change. And government came up with a plan to double farmers' income. Now, this was a very welcome change because from production centricity, we moved toward income centricity. It is not, it is not important how much farmer grows or what farmer grows. But what is important is that his income should go up. And government took a very big challenge that we will increase farmer, double farmer income on a base of 15, 16 of 98,000 rupees to about 2 lakh rupees in 21, 22 on a uh, uh, real basis. This is an uphill task because post that food inflation has not been very high. And we have grown in last four years at the rate of 3%. Now, it is easy to say that we can go for income centricity, but that also requires opening up the market. There should be uh, opportunities for farmers to diversify, opportunities for, for farmers to sell uh, whatever they produce uh, to anybody they want. And as far as the market access was concerned, they, the government had created a legal cartel in the guard of APMC. So they said that the farmers can only sell in APMC and the buyers can only come in APMC and all the ills uh, uh, which come with a monopoly came in this sector also. farmers we will get into those details in uh, how the APMC Act has evolved. The farmer to kahi bhi bech sakta, lekin most of the crops koi kharid nahi sakta. Or MSP ke niche bhi nahi kharid sakta at one time, ye wala rule tha. So, unka koi fayda nahi hua. Is liye bohut zaruri thi ke is sector ko uh, azad karna. Or ye teen uh, jo uh, uh, act aye hai, uh, they, will go in long, they will go a long way in reforming this sector, in giving farmers the real access to markets, both domestic as well as um, as well as international, we will sell, we will not sell what we produce, but we will produce what we can sell and what we can sell remuneratively. And one good thing I must appreciate is that innumerable efforts by different governments have been made. APMC is the most discussed topic in all seminars, webinars, uh, and government fora in past 20 years, but nobody looked at a comprehensive reform. So all three acts have to come together. That was one. Three more things government have brought in, which are going to be very good enabler. Uh, one of the key things was that in case you have an or you want to have an alternate market structure, there should be a lot of infrastructure developed at village level or closer to the farm. For that, one lakh crore infrastructure development fund is very very important. The second thing they did was that we have to consolidate farmer power, both from the point of bargaining and also from the point of view of low. Uh, smaller land holdings because it is very important that land holdings are also consolidated if not legally but definitely through other structures like uh, uh, like FPOs etc. So the target of 10,000 FPOs coming in future is a very very important target. This is a very big initiative and should be pushed with full vigor. And the third thing is that farmers can only sell outside uh, when he is out of the clutches of Arathia because Arathia is his source of credit. So they have uh, put a lot of focus on Kisan credit card, which is a very novel scheme for farmers to access working capital and as well as for small investments also. With all six initiatives, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that future for Indian agriculture is going to be very bright. And I'm very sure that this government will go ahead and implement these reforms in, in, in the true sense. Uh, so, uh, perfect, uh, Ram, you know, that sort of gives us a setting into really going into the details and the nuances of each of these topics. Mm. Uh, so, let's just look at the background, you know, Indian agriculture in itself. Uh, you know, I think you touched upon it, but if you can really tell us uh, more on what do you think are the fundamental flaws of Indian agriculture sector and what is the genesis of all this? Yeah, so... Uh... When a, when a sector is uh, suppressed like this, there are a lot of things which will probably uh, uh, become very, very um, problematic. And uh, that is why the, the role of government and interference of government is required in almost everything. And I must tell you that uh, some of the basic flaws in Indian agriculture are the gap between falling incomes and rising cost is increasing. You must have seen 
food inflation pretty much is under control the farmers are not getting remunerative prices whereas uh, costs are all going up and we are agriculture is becoming more and more unviable uh, for the farmers i'll give you a few examples then whatever i tell you at one time we were big exporters of soya meal and corn uh, particularly 100% of the requirement of bangladesh of soya meal and corn were supplied by india slowly we are priced out of that market now bangladesh is our our participation in bangladesh market is less than 10% of their total increased requirement and you will be really surprised that it makes lot of sense for these people to import from latin america because it is cheaper there but not buy from india so i'm saying this is the way we are getting priced out so we were always solving for production not solving for income and that is why we had this problem of that we were producing whatever we can sell and uh, just because there was so much of production and there were so much of volatility we had a system of procurement through fci now fci was okay when there were shortages because we need to to keep uh, uh, security stock but you'll be really surprised that in last 4 5 years uh, fci needs about 20 million tons to 40 million tons at different times of the year as security stock most of the time they have to keep 150% to 300% of that uh, just to make sure that the farmer does not suffer and that is yours and mine money which goes in that and you can see that uh, fci loans have gone from 1 lakh crore 5 years ago to almost 2.6 lakh crores now the third thing is that we have been coddling the farmer rather than giving him respect as an entrepreneur we tell him what to grow where to grow how we will give water how we will give fertilizer when we will give fertilizer we seek to buy etc etc now cut when we curtail the freedom then we had to bail him out through msp so we gave him msp and we have to make sure that msp is uh, msp is respected so we told everybody not to buy from msp of course now that has been removed but for time the memorial nobody could buy below the msp and that is why this illegal market outside apmc developed the other thing is that gross capital formation in this sector has been extremely poor uh, when the fa doubling farmer income was uh, Uh, and besides uh, mr ashok dalwai's committee said that we need close to about 55 to 57000 crores of capital formation not even half has been done in the first four years you will be really surprised that gross capital formation uh, has been constant at 14 15 16% percent of agri gdp for last 7 8 years so there is no investment now the government is trying to solve that through several infrastructure funds and last is that we have a huge consumer bias in policy making we are more bothered about the urban people not paying more for onions and milk and other things rather than farmer getting more prices and any time you know you look at the current onion uh, this thing i'm saying there plenty of times i give an example of edible oil you want atmanirbharta in edible oil you just increase the prices of edible oil even if the increase the price of edible oil goes up by 10 bucks or say India per capita consumption is one seventy seventeen point five kilos. It is fifty paisa per day. If every Indian will pay for uh, Indian oil production to increase, so these are the kind of things which have not been done for such a long time, and this is what ails Indian agriculture. And I think it is very very flawed policy from um, uh, which has emanated to emanated from secularism and from uh, insecurity about food security. So, Balram, you know, you touched upon another thing on on productivity, and you know, from my past experience, I remember we used to look at cotton data. You know, you know, India used to be always in the top two producers, top two consumers, one of the best markets, and yet when it comes to productivity, uh, we are amongst the worst, I think, in the world. Uh, even amongst our states, you know, Rajasthan is way different than what Maharashtra is. What is inherently the issue of productivity in Indian agriculture? i must tell you that uh, um, i am great fan of great parliamentary speeches and i think that our problem is the same what it was 50 60 years ago in one of the speeches of dr ram manohar lohia when uh, uh, when the government was enumerating their support to agriculture in the early 60s and what all they are going to do and how farmer will be supported 
and i must tell you that dr manohia uh, dr ram manohar lohia got up and said aap har khet mein pani pahuncha do apne aap problem solve ho jayegi now if you really see this continues to be the problem at one time we today we are more than 50% in uh, uh, irrigated and uh, that means that around 50% of area in india is still rain fed and why we celebrate this year because uh, today this this year we have a record kharif area of 111 million hectare which will never happen if the uh, monsoon is not on time so not only net crop area gross crop area goes up because you can have more crops per acre uh, in a year when you have water let me tell you the disparity now haryana and punjab 99% and 93% irrigated food grain production 4.3 tons per hectare and 3.3 ton 3.7 tons per hectare respectively in punjab and haryana come to karnataka and maharashtra we boast about all this so much karnataka is about 29% irrigated maharashtra is 21 22% irrigated this data is little uh, dated but let me just tell you that i am trying to make the point food grain grain production per hectare karnataka 1.7 1.8 tons and maharashtra is about 1.5 tons this is the difference the kind of difference irrigation can make in this country i am telling Just get to the global average in food production in everything. Our food production will more than double. So we need not go to the best. We just have to go to that. Now, small land holding is a problem. Eighty-five percent of land holding is less than two hectare. Marginal farming, subsistence, subsistence farming, a lack of technology, lack of credit—all the ills which are associated with uh, small land holding are there. as a student of agriculture i don't hold it against the farmer i am telling you there are innumerable countries which have found structures like fpo etc and cooperative where this land holding small land holding has become a very uh, big strength because of the intensive farming uh, one can do with so many farmers adoption of technology is always a problem you know hybrid seed penetration in most of the crops is is very low our r&d spends are abysmal 0.3% of our agri gdp is our r&d spend most of it is in pure agriculture about 10% of that is in animal agriculture and 9% out of 10% is for milk because we don't consider that chicken uh, mutton fish aqua or uh, eggs constitute a very important source having said that let me tell you one third of agri gdp is animal agriculture almost 35% now animal agriculture for last 10 years is growing between 4 to 5% pure agriculture is growing at about 1% and i will not be uh, i'm not uh, exaggerating that animal agriculture will be half of gdp in next 5 to 7 years and i'll be wrong by a year or two the other thing is that i do not know why our policy makers are so matlab they are in a different level in science you talked about uh, gm cotton the bt cotton now why we are losing the race to everybody is because we are not adopting gm technologies which can result in immediately increased productivity in most of the crops and problem is that we are not approving gm and we feel that it is not good for a country like ours but it is good for a de- advanced developed country like america and europe but it is not good for us we have given the example of cotton we have be- this year we will become the largest producer of cotton from 308 kilos per hectare our cotton production has gone to 550 kilos per hectare 75% plus increase in cotton cotton is the most grown crop the uh, the other benefit is that cotton used to be infested with many uh, insects and pests pesticide usage, usage in bt cotton has come down significantly pesticide usage has come down so i think this hypocrisy about not adopting cutting edge technologies for some strange reason and from for some lobby is uh, the, one of the big reasons why what aids indian agriculture so bhagav i think having set the context uh, in terms of these laws uh, i think mm. for our audience uh, can you just elaborate the farm to fork chain you know so that mm. then we can understand really why we needed these three laws yeah so let me just tell you that agri production at uh, nominal prices will be close to about 30 lakh crores let me tell you very big numbers so 
about 7 lakh crores of milk out of apmc about 1 and 1/2 lakh crores of poultry out of apmc about 2 and 1/2 lakh crores of uh, of uh, uh, fish and uh, aqua etc out of apmc so animal agriculture totally totally out of apmc now uh, we came up with the apmc act then everybody started criticizing it because it became a legal cartel and uh, the the uh, the um, uh, the traders and the middlemen became very important and they started influencing policy they got uh, rules made uh, which favored them so they got their commission increased you cannot pay the buyer cannot pay the farmer directly it has to be through the aratias and uh, then they got rules where uh, apmc became more and more powerful now government realized that and a um, empowered committee of ministers was said and since this is a state subject agriculture marketing and apmc acts are state acts they came up with a model uh, apmc act model apmc act said that yes you can uh, do contract farming you can uh, sell outside uh, the farmers can go and sell outside to anybody and the buyer can buy but he'll have to pay the apmc and then they came up with a land leasing act etc with limited success the states were asked to adopt it and most of the states adopted it to their convenience so na 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 original act ra na new act ra ye pata nahi kya ban gaya uske baad fir upa government ke andar ek initiative hua jisme committee of agriculture minister was made and they said that if you cannot touch it most of the states should make um, uh, fruits and vegetables outside apmc so you can sell directly अब डायरेक्टली बेचना जो बड़ा आसान है कहना क्योंकि उसमें बायर भी चाहिए उसमें इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर चाहिए अभी हमारे पास ढाई हजार एपीएमसी है और चार हजार छोटे मंडी हैं जो एपीएमसी से लिंक्ड है दो सेवन थाउजेंड मंडी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज यू नीड ए प्लेस टू सेल यू नीड बायर टू कम यू नीड यू कैनोट गो एंड स्टार्ट बाइंग ऑन ए पीस ऑफ लैंड सो आई एम सेट सक्सेसफुल एंड लेट मी जस्ट गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल इफ पीपल फील दैट APMC is not important. Out of 15-16 lakh crore of pure agriculture, about 8-9 lakh crore uh, of products pass through APMC. And uh, if you, I'll give you example of Maharashtra, just because we are in this state. So, uh, Maharashtra 2019, 50,000 crore worth of uh, agri produce pass through APMC. 20,000 crores of uh, fruits and agriculture. But in APMC, there is no fee on fruits and. Uh, 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 fruits and uh, vegetables horticulture Vegetable. crops yeah. uh, no fee but you have fee on cereals and a uh, lot of forestry products also 20000 crores of cereals and 10000 crores of other products uh, went through apmc so apmcs were also important but i think that it became a big big racket and uh, i'm saying uh, this cartel of buyers made sure that the farmers did not get remunerative prices you have to pay through them so farmers was dependent on them and i am telling you all kinds of ills which can happen in a mandi were happening in our mandis uh, can you imagine uh, murgank getting a correct payment is a very very big thing in indian agriculture amazing so this is the problem and and it is uh, one day i described that it is just going to a pilgrimage that you enter the mandi people will charge you for everything loading unloading <laughs> opening bag dheri lagana isn't it uh, ye check karna payment karna iska har cheez ka charge hota hai and everything to farmer account apart from government tax apmc fee aratiya commission etc etc uske baad jo hai wo limited number of traders are there because license is needed and then the other traders will buy and everybody will add to their thing do their uh, margins and in india um, there was a paper i read in india the value add because of this non value adding activity is close to 65 to 70% in normal circumstances whereas in a place like indonesia which is no better than us is 15 to 20% so coming to this uh, apnc act i think uh, the one is ending the monopoly uh, hmm. can you give us some idea how you believe this will this could lead to the end of this monopoly uh, because will not a parallel system could not a parallel system become as exploited so uh, uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, one of the things is that i don't think apmcs are going to uh, going to vanish 
already the infrastructure exists. The competition will make them efficient. The competition will make them um, um, uh, make them cheaper also. Their infrastructure will be utilized. And, and I'm just, just uh, uh, making a guess. My sense is that trade through APMCs in future might just go up because uh, all the good practices will come, transparency will come, no uh, licenses required, etc. So the APMC might uh, come in a new avatar and may become more efficient. And all this will happen because a lot of procurement will start directly from the farmers. A lot of these, uh, uh, um, you know, there are a huge number of uh, startups who are consolidating fruits and vegetables for modern retail, etc. Uh, they will start getting into cereals and areas where, which were very much reserved for APMC just because there is no commission. The law provides for quick payment also. So payment has to be made in three days, which is much faster than any other payment uh, made through any other system. Now, according to me, if the law is implemented and if uh, states are onboarded, it will be a very, very big game changer. So immediately I see that... Uh, farmers will have better realization and the prices will come down. And there is a lot of data and um, innumerable studies have been done in Karnataka because uh, Karnataka implemented the ENAM much better because they have their own model where we have seen that farmers got more and the buyers got at a cheaper price and intermediation costs came down. So I think uh, the other thing most important will happen is that just because that essential commodities act is not there. So there will be a lot of logistics and storage infrastructure will come and this 1 lakh crores of infrastructure development fund will uh, take the infrastructure development nearer the villages. I'm, my guess is that uh, our villages or near villages will become the next uh, invest destination for investment in, in future. And arbitrage will not be a crime. And can you imagine how draconian was Essential Services Act? In 2019, there were 76,000 raids. So, uh, I think uh, yeah. so other thing yeah, I just wa wanted to add was that uh, food processing companies will start direct procurement. Uh, exporters will start direct procurement because we need to lock in our costs and we need to lock in our quality. So, I think they will start going direct and they will be start buying most of the quantity in the season. Medium to long term, I think uh, buyer and farmer will come closer. Contract farming is going to start in a big way. And I can give you several examples of contract farming when we come to that in future. And I am sure that there will be a lot of specialization which will develop in Indian agriculture. You, you will know areas like the tomato ka area, hai, wo mushroom ka area, hai, wo iska area. Hai. Still, that those clusters are there, but these clusters will develop because of very, very strong buying by the processors, by the exporters, by the, by the uh, traders. Uh, so, Bhagram, coming to another ingredient of this whole act, which is the MSP, you know, uh, and a lot is being made about uh, this topic, uh, even politically. Can you just explain uh, to a layman, what is this whole MSP about and why is it something which had to be removed uh, as a binding condition? So, MSP implementation is the poorest implementation ever in this country. Let me tell you how. So there is a 23 commodities MSP is declared by the government. In last 20 years, 90% of MSP procurement has been wheat and paddy. Because that was, those were the most important crop. Those farmers are rich farmers, bigger land holding, politically strong. And according to us, food security meant wheat and paddy. So we just were procuring wheat and paddy. And uh, in every year, you will see some state or the other in trying to support their farmer off and on will procure a little bit of corn, a little, uh, uh, little bit of soybean, a little bit of rapeseed somewhere. But most of it will be wheat and paddy. Most of it will be Western UP, Northern Rajasthan, Haryana, and Punjab. Only 6% of the farmers benefited from the MSP. And I'll tell you why. The reason is that there can be nothing sweeter than MSP procurement for all the players, particularly in the states of Haryana and Punjab. So earlier there were 14.5% uh, charges for APMC, procure, uh, APMC 
procurement through apmc which the farmer had to bear but only in the states of haryana and punjab the the central government will reimburse that cost so it, there is a income for rrp which is assured in, a farmer has to pay nothing mandi gets assured payment and government has assured taxes 10000 crores was the number for haryana and punjab if they procured msp procurement through rajas in rajasthan and up never got this reimbursement so it was such a sweet deal for all the players including the farmer now the haryana and punjab farmer according to me i feel that i sympathize with them because most of the problems of indian agriculture in haryana and punjab is only because of wheat and paddy whether it is water level whether it is because these people kept on growing wheat and paddy because there is a assured buyer at very 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 remunerative prices and the government had the money to give free electricity fertilizer subsidy that subsidy water is in any way free and it is a very remunerative crop and there is a buyer called central government which will buy irrespective of the feather fact that whether it needs it or not it will buy a store throw but they will get their money so this was the problem of msp and that is why the pain is most in these two states no nowhere else let me just tell you that msp is declared for corn 22 million tons of corn are of corn is produced in this country not even half a million ton is ever procured by any of the government isn't it off and on it is done to protect yeah, the prices yeah. hmm. the payment to through the aditya the best part of the whole thing is that the uh, uh, aditya gets the money then it pays to the farmer so the the vicious or the virtuous cycle of uh, aditya selling inputs to the farmer aditya giving loan to the farmer on very high interest and aditya recovering that money everybody is happy so this is the situation of msp so msp meant nothing in 21 commodities it only meant something in few states in wheat and paddy so so bagram you know i think two states uh, uh, if if i remember well uh, have had uh, the apmc acts in many ways repeatedly i think uh, bihar and kerala uh, where this act has not been there for some time what has been their experience i mean and how has that developed is that a learning uh, in a positive way negative way how is that so both the states uh, both the states uh, contribute very little to the indian agriculture uh, i think mm-hmm. kerala is 3% and bihar is 4% now kerala is uh, not a agri state so i think that example i will not give but i'll give you this example of bihar mm-hmm. and let me just tell you that the problem of bihar is not apmc and i'll give some more data and compare what i am talking about so population of bihar is 11 and a half to 12 crores which is equivalent to population of maharashtra i am just comparing the states because of population now total area bihar is close to about 109 lakh uh, uh, 1.09 lakh square kilometer maharashtra is triple of that arable land 5.4 million hectares in bihar more than almost 11 lakh hect- 11 million hectares in maharashtra so same population more than double the arable land industrialization and infrastructure i am not even talking about hmm. almost negligible industrialization in bihar so what are we yeah. comparing but let me tell you that most of the farming is subsistence farming and most of the consumption of whatever these people were producing is happening in the state uh, 38.75% of wheat produced in maharashtra was procured by government in 2019 only 0.1% of the wheat produced in bihar was procured by the government because there is no surplus everything is subsistence so farmers either jo, they have jo to eat wo wahi pe wahi pe kha lete wahi pe ha aur jo village level mein jo trader hai wo kharidta hai aur wo idhar se idhar jiske paas hai usko de deta hai to yahi problem hai lekin aapko main batata hu ki bihar mein dheere dheere kya hua cereal production started coming down because productivity improved unne ne ka koi surplus to humse kharidta nahi hai so let us not grow that and cash crop started growing and banana production started increasing tomato production started increasing lot of fruits have started increasing best example peep i want to give is corn corn correct ko ha maize India India used to produce 95% of their corn in Kharif all the corn will come in 
September and October. And then there was a very small rabi crop in corn. Bihar saw this sweet spot about 15 years ago. Slowly they started because post monsoon the soil moisture condition is excellent. And because of poor infrastructure, the flood becomes a blessing in disguise in Rabia. <laughs> because yeah. your soil is very fertile because of uh, deposition of uh, silt. And on top of that, you have mo good moisture condition. They got this sweet spot of corn. Today, Bihar produces 4 million tons of corn. They, whenever there is export possible to Bangladesh, in, in, like this year, Bihar has exported huge amount of corn there because there is APMC is not there. Uh, uh, we are uh, uh, most of the feed millers, most of the big guys like Cargill, Dreyfus, Bungi, etc. Everybody has procurement centers in Bihar. We have very good infrastructure. For Gulab Bag is one of the biggest mandis in this country, courtesy corn. Okay. So I'm saying a lot of infrastructure development is there. For last five years we have been procuring that. I have got data. If you want, I can give it to you. You can put it on screen and you can put it on your website. Last five years, once the corn was above MSP prices, thrice it was lower than MSP, and once it was at almost at MSP. Uh, this year, the prices have been much lower than MSP, uh, but Bihar farmer is not crib cribbing because he has benefited from the open market. MSP is one more thing one people must understand. MSP is for the top quality delivered in the market. When farmer comes to the market, there are huge amount of logistic costs, etc., etc. Whereas a lot of procurement prices are ex farm. So yeah. this is not a good comparison. And I am telling you, highest productivity of corn Bihar, highest penetration of hybrid in Bihar. They look at it as industry now. But having so, said that, it that state has a long way to go. Agriculture only cannot solve their problem. Sure. Uh, coming and, and, and to the next law, contract farming. You know, what do you see contract farming doing for the farmer? Uh, mainly, uh, you know, looking at exactly how will this law help the farmer? You know, because this is not very new to India, right? No, contract farming is not new to India because one of the ways, uh, uh, one of the ways we have uh, solved the um, small holding problem is through leasing which is also an old kind of contract farming because some of the produce you have to part with the, with the landowner, etc. But uh, let me tell you that contract farming is likely to become the future. And let me tell you some of the things which have been very successful, some of the models which have been very successful, but nobody talks about it and what wonders they have done for the farmers. So contract farming is super successful in chicken industry. 70,000 crores worth of chicken is produced in this country. Uh, to give another uh, twist to the uh, number, let me say that 75 million birds are produced per week in this country. And 85% in contract farming system. So the companies give day old chicks, they give vaccine, they give medicine, they give feed to the farmer. The farmer grows the birds and gives back to the company and they sell it or they process it. Now, why this has been super successful? Because chicken was a very volatile market. The companies took the price risk out of the system. So contract farming is super successful. During uh, February, March, just because anytime virus comes, chicken industry is to be blamed, chicken prices collapsed. The industry suffered a loss of between 20 to 25,000 crores, both egg and chicken industry. All the, those losses have been borne by the big companies like ours. The farmers are insulated. Everybody made sure because farmer power is also consolidated. So they got their growing charges. They got it late, but they have growing, got the growing charges. Now, what has been the outcome? In year 2000, per capita consumption of chicken was a kilo in this country when contract farming started. Today, four kilos. In 20 years, it has become four times. And just and real prices of chicken have grown at 1.5% kegar for last 20 years. So actually, because of improved efficiency, we have brought in technology, both in nutrition and genetics. And 20 years ago, the chicken used to take two kilos to become one kilo body weight. Now it takes 1.5 kilo. So, so much of technological improvement companies and farmers have done because by uh, feed, breed, and genetics. 
and that benefit has flown to consumer because of low prices of chicken. Chicken is the cheapest protein today. Okay, then contract farming models have proved successful where the price paid is higher than the market price. So entire seed industry of this country, seed production is through contract farming. Because normal corn is say 18 rupees a kilo, whereas seed corn we can pay 24, 25 rupees a kilo. Farmers uh, have to follow a lot of practices. Their cost is also high. So their contract farming is very successful and very specialized activity. So those things I think were already happening. The other problem was that a lot of other contract farming is happening for organic produce, for uh, medicinal plants, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there was no framework, proper framework of performance of those contracts by the farmers and uh, and the and the um, buyers. So uh, plenty of time the farmer will renege from the contract if the market prices of that product outside and the uh, the buyer could do nothing because you know the farmer power is. Uh, very high when it uh, when they have to deal with corporates. Uh, nobody can exploit them because judiciary, executive, and legislature all will come running to support them. They will not support them and trader exploit them. Huh? Let me make that qualification. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, so now there is a framework. There is a contract. Then there is a price discovery mechanism which has to evolve. It can be a fixed price or it can be a reference price. And the best part of this is, and we will have to see how it evolves, is the dispute resolution mechanism is not going to judiciary. It is with the bureaucracy that you go to the collector or the deputy collector or additional collector. Because most of the disputes in agriculture are very small. Even if somebody disputes on 5 rupees a kg of wheat price on 10, uh, uh, 10 acres, uh, it will come to 10 acres will mean 20 tons into... Five rupees is one lakh rupee, and why you, do you want to go to court if you can settle court. it outside? So, so I'm saying that we just have to see how this evolves. But huge amount of movement towards this is likely to happen because, please remember, buyers, processors, exporters, they pay premium on quality. So let me just change tack and, and look at you know you spoken about the three laws which are coming in. And yet you see huge opposition, uh, opposition from the opposition parties and opposition from some segments of, of farmers. Yeah. Uh, your, your views, your guess, uh, why is this happening? So the, one is that there is a lot of misinformation. And I think uh, innumerable times it has been specified that MSP is not doing. So that is one. APMC cannot be abolished because APMC is a state. Uh, instrument. It is governed by state laws. If states are so bothered, they should immediately uh, strengthen APMCs. And some of them have started strengthening APMCs. Uh, Haryana, Punjab have reduced the APMC uh, market fee. Uh, Haryana has made it 0.5% from 2. And Punjab has made it from 1% from 2. Karnataka has made the market fee from 1.5 to 1 and now they have made it 0.35%. So they have to strengthen the APMC. So they will Everybody is scared that APMC will go. APMC will not go. APMC will be there. They will say, they are saying that uh, slowly the MSP will go. MSP cannot go because MSP has to stay because it is, it is in the Contract Farming Act also, it is used as a reference price in plenty of things. So okay. that is the point. The third thing is that uh, people are saying in future, the corporates will come and exploit the farmers. I can tell you that it is not possible. Anyway, most of the procurement by corporates is not done directly. It is done through aggregators. So there is a, there is a, a new level which will develop. These are the aggregators, which are service providers to us. They are not the people who will do arbitrage or take position risk or price risk on these products. But they are the people who will provide because fragmented land holding, we cannot manage the logistics, we cannot manage the local relationships, etc. So a lot of aggregation will happen. So it is impossible to exploit. So all these things, all these uh, misinformation is the reason uh, why there is uh, so much of misunderstanding. On the other hand, I must definitely say that the Aratiyas and the traders who had this um, uh, coveted piece of paper called license, APMC license, are definitely threatened because um, because outside APMC, the farmer will have to 
in nothing and he he will love that so any time he has an opportunity of bypassing apmc he will he will uh, uh, bypass that and most of the agitation you also see is also in some way uh, driven by traders so there are some of the reasons why all this is happening uh so i think the uh, ground uh, in the you did mention again that you expect uh, capital formation uh, in the agriculture yes. sector which is something which i think is is something which has been inadequate uh, is is what you already mentioned but uh, what do you think needs to be done now and how will these new mm -hmm. laws allow the private sector to really participate in terms of capital investment in the agriculture sector so uh, i would say that initially everybody will be circumspect because how laws are made and implemented in the country you and i know it very well because one can make the law and not support it and one of the chief things i keep on saying again and again is onboarding of states uh, is very important and i must tell you that there was a tacit appreciation of this initiative because when the uh, when the uh, ordinances came almost 16 states uh, issued uh executive orders to implement yes yes, yes yes and now some of them are backing out because of political reasons but everybody right. knows that these are uh, steps in the right direction yeah sorry there are steps in right direction so capital formation first and foremost will have to be driven by the government now there is almost 135 to 140000 crores which is going to come and let me just add uh, animal agriculture into it and 1 lakh crores will come for i'm saying we are very short of packing houses cold storages cold chains near farm infrastructure is abysmal that is why the farmer has to bring to mandi because he cannot store nearby yeah so i think those uh, those investments will have to uh, uh, pick up and let me tell you that before the big boys come most of these advantage will be taken by small entrepreneurs the slightly richer farmers and richer people in the village will take that benefit take a loan of crore of rupees put a 25000 square foot uh, go down put a 5000 square feet for cold storage also because there is lot of value in holding the crop for some time and soya farmers in in uh, in uh, uh, in madhya pradesh have seen now at one time soya bean was stored mostly by the uh, by the uh, processors now soya bean is stored by the farmer because successive government gave lot of subsidies for storage solution <coughs> apart from that there is a <coughs> sorry 15000 crore fund for uh, 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 infrastructure development in uh, animal husbandry 20000 crores fund for uh, aquaculture development particularly northern states people will sur be surprised that northern states will become the fish Uh, producing states after some time because of brackish water and new varieties are being uh, introduced by the government in these areas because of these funds etc so my sense is that uh, there will be lot of uh, infrastructure development in two th first two three years uh, which will happen because of this government initiatives and private sector will watch how the government Im uh, implements all that and then we see then we will see a ferocious play of competitive federalism i am telling you that best foot forward is likely to happen in attracting uh, investment in agri sector because then the big guys will come in warehousing in logistics and in cold storage cold chain etc 100% fdi and processing 100% fdi is permitted so the big boys are definitely going to come if india is going to become an export hub we need Uh, uh, global scale and global quality, uh, quality, quality infrastructure to store, and that cannot be put by small entrepreneurs. So there'll be a story for zero to three years, and there'll be story for three and beyond. And I must tell you, uh, Murgang, we have to become an export hub. There is no other go. And the greatest opportunity we have is biggest importer of food. The GCC countries are two and a half. hours away what we lack is the right pricing for the right quality and post harvest technology also so it is just matter of time that lot of contract farming will develop in this country for exports 
So coming to this one, and I think uh, you know one of the important things as a consumer, uh, what would the end consumer benefit out of this, and how can that benefit be used to create a broader consensus uh, for these laws? So one of the things, like uh, let me just step back and say that one most important thing, if the government really is very scared of people exploiting the farmer, is to push the FPO movement. Mm. So that I think is has to be done, and we can take that up later. How the consumer is going to benefit is if you see, consumer already benefits because modern retail is one area where you see the 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 vegetables are much better quality, packed nicely, and are at very competitive prices, isn't it? And the yeah. benefits and there is reasonably good transparency which is coming in the farmer's price and in the end uh, user's price, which uh, transparency did not exist during the APMC thing. So, so farmer will get more that we are seeing in so many FPOs which are there, which are uh, working with the, uh, with a lot of these uh, startups. And one of the startups I can name, which is doing a very good job called Ninja Card, where they are procuring, packing. They have educated farmers on the quality uh, they need. They have made sure that big, a cluster of farmers uh, come together and grow a particular crop so that they can get scale advantage. The big problem is when you have one acre of brinjal and one acre of uh, one acre of loki dudi. So the pest of this will go to this, and the pest of this will go to this, and both schedules will be different. So it is very important to build scale from quality point of view, from pest point of view, from procurement point of view. So that will bring down the cost significantly and everybody talks about very efficient uh, technology driven logistics and technology driven growth plus when it becomes a little remunerative you you just cannot believe what productivity gains can be there example potato in in uh, uh, gujarat and this was started by a multinational because they needed particular type of potato with the right type of sugar uh, right quantity of sugar because to make their potato products uh, etc. And, uh, you know, uh, Farsan is a very big thing in Gujarat and there is so, so much of contract growing of potato happens. And the kind of uh, uh, drip irrigation is must for potato growing in Gujarat. Very good varieties. And as a student of agriculture, as well as consumption, because potato is a very dangerous crop for logistics. More than 85% is water. So when you carry potato, you are carrying water. And when you make it a wafer and pack it and put air in the wafer pack, what you transport is also air. So you carry water and air on both sides. <laughs> so that is why it is very important that uh, uh, these kind of uh, technology driven contract farming methods come. Contract farming can be very good quality at a market price or a premium to market price because everybody is ready to pay a premium to the market for good quality in this country right now. Because corporates have a reputation to protect of their outlets, etc., etc., for their food products. So my sense is that uh, uh, the big benefit will come to consumer in terms of quality. The other thing, let me just tell you, Murgank, and I think I'll surprise you a little. You know, world over, particularly in developed world, processed food is cheaper than fresh food. This yeah. is the only country where processed food is much more expensive. expensive. One of the reasons is taxation also. But yeah. the other reason is just because we cannot procure during season and which prices are the lowest. Like when the, when the tomato comes into the market, the prices are so low that you can make all the tomato puree you want in a day. So I think these are some of the models which will start emerging. And some kind of deflation of prices of processed food is likely to happen. But we will all see these are still early days. But I think we will see how the industry evolves. But definitely taxation and all that thing has to, has to go down significantly. So, but I'm, uh, I'm conscious of time, so I'm, I'm looking towards my last uh, few questions. Uh, but uh, there's one uh, topic which is on the whole 
you know, uh, formalization of the warehousing sector. You know, the WDRA as a regulator, the electronic negotiable uh, warehouse receipts, ENWRs. Mm. How do we make sure that that whole instrument, the ENWR, really becomes the next tool of change in this market? Uh, what are your thoughts of, of taking this forward? So uh, let me tell you, anywhere where technology and scale is needed, whether it is warehousing or whether it is uh, um, hedging on the exchange, etc., uh, you need uh, bigger players to come in. And then again, I go to FPO because these two have a great relation to marketable surplus being generated. Isn't it? When individual farmers don't generate marketable surplus, these two initiatives are of no use. Isn't it? That is why I'm saying that big push of consolidation of farming, farmers has to happen. Whether you become cooperative or you become FPO, FPO is more vibrant than cooperative. And that is a must. When you say warehousing receipt, etc., that model actually, the benefit of that model was being taken by traders. Isn't it? Where were the farmers in that model? And uh, government definitely is taking a lot of uh, steps in that direction. I think last October, they just so that farmer can hedge their produce, they allowed settlement uh, 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 settlement uh, with the, I think, uh, uh, spot prices. Yeah, yeah, so I think they also allowed options on spot prices. Oh, uh, options on spot prices uh, rather than devolving into futures. Futures. So the right. farmers can definitely grow and hedge uh, in the in the exchange. The, yeah. the, I understand that there is a problem of spot prices because of uh, spot prices and future because of logistics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think uh, all this is going to sophisticate as we go along. And farmers will see value when they have sufficient marketable surplus. And that will hope only happen either the farmer is very big or they consolidate. Well, so I have, but uh, I'm going to be probably my last uh, two questions. Uh, uh, the first one uh, that we put, uh, you mentioned this. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, like in the financial world, this is the 1991 moment for agriculture. Uh, as, as a closing remark, what's your view? Is this the 1991 moment? <laughs> so 30 years we have I've suffered this sector. And uh, I told you that uh, two Gs, actually I did not tell you three G. I tell everybody that uh, Indian agriculture and Godrej Agrovet depends on three Gs. Actually Godrej Agrovet depends on three G. Indian agriculture depends on a lot of other things. One is uh, God, government, and team Godrej. So I control only one third. Because there are, I'm telling you that one of the biggest problem of this country in agriculture that it is a state subject. We are dealing with almost uh, more complex than EU. It is a conglomerate of 25, 30 countries. If you have to trade, you have to take licenses in all these states. Procedures are different. Some state gives the license, some state does not give the license. And everything is so difficult because state to state, their policy change depending on their focus, their priorities, etc. Isn't it? So what, if you are operating in Indian agriculture, you will never get a, uh, get a feeling that you are in one country. Because movement of products is a problem. Procurement of product is a problem. Entry, so GST has solved a lot of those issues. But still, I'm saying, so one of the things which is going to happen with this kind of law is that India will be one. No license needed. You can move. Uh, so there is a national perspective will come. So specializations will come. Wherever water is there, vegetables will grow. And they will grow in huge quantities so that they can move to shortages areas very quickly. To facilitate that, the Essential Commodities Act had to go. Plus, a lot of money had to be infused to create that infrastructure. And I think on top of that, contract farming had to be made easy and farmers had to be protected in some way. Some kind of a framework will have to be provided 
so all that has to be done so all that has been done so definitely i feel that this is a great movement for indian agriculture and uh, our uh, very respected economist uh, dr ashok gulati has definitely used this sentence uh, that it is 1991 movement when license raj is going def definitely is going uh, agriculture is being unshackled that is definitely being unshackled and all the areas of agriculture which have been unshackled like animal agriculture uh, milk chicken etc etc have all shown very remunerative growth and rapid growth for the farmers that is likely to come uh, my hope is that states as well as center come together and implement these laws in a, in 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 a way that the farmer gets very quick benefit and whatever their obligations are they should play their part uh, uh, with in in letter and spirit and make sure that this moment is not lost so uh, like i mentioned in the beginning agriculture and farmers are very sensitive topics and tend to arouse strong emotions in both the speakers and the listeners but to convert that emotion into passion and then mix it with excellent articulation and erudition thank you balram for a very heady cocktail of all thoughts on this extremely important subject uh, in spite of being a long weekend i know you've been working doubly hard to educate many an audience like ours you did a webinar just before this you are doing one more after this so very big thank you again uh, i would also like to thank parak koth for his technical help and tendulkar ji for his posters our audience uh, you know we are very happy we get hundreds of people live we cross thousands of views in a week webinar after webinar we've been able to do this uh, our donors who are more than 200 today and all those who are registered with us uh, thanks again to all of them as we are all actively looking to unlock ourselves there are many a topics that are important uh, china international relationships kashmir agriculture education ayodhya we've tried to cover all these in our recent webinars uh, but if there's anything of interest to you do get back to us uh, but until then stay safe and stay healthy and thank you and balram yes you are so um, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk about this this is the reform all people passionate about agriculture were waiting for and i'm so glad that i could i could uh, uh, say whatever i wanted to say so thank you for this opportunity the farmers who are watching this uh, i can definitely say that this is a golden moment just don't lose it and i think uh, we can build a better and a stronger in, uh, india with this uh, liberalization thank you very much thank you so much